Welcome, those of you that are with me today. I'm hoping that a few more are going to come in as the time gets closer to half past. Nice to see you. So just while we're waiting for everybody to join us, either if you'd like to speak or if you want to put in the chat box, what is the current ch biggest challenge at the moment for you? And what do you think the challenge is going to be during August, July and August moving forward? Morale, do you want to speak? <laughs> Hi there. Hi, uh, Emma. Uh, yeah. So I think that the uh, challenges are uh, keeping on top of things um okay. and uh also like um uh, you know keeping up to the avian commitment i think you know okay. that uh, um i think that, that 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 has been a bit uh, uh challenging initially it was easy because you know the momentum was there right mm -hmm. but uh, then uh, uh sort of it slowed down a bit uh i think it became a bit lazy um, <laughs> <laughs> easily done yes uh, but uh, and uh, and i think with with my practice i'm trying to see how i can change it to, to become like you know more working for me uh, rather than the other way around and uh, uh, disciplining myself that uh, um it's, it's not a hobby, um, it's mm. a business, you know, so yeah. um, uh, yes, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun uh, helping clients, but uh, yeah, so I think the, 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 those are the challenges, you know, like. Uh, Thank you, that's really helpful. Giles, come on, come on camera if you're, you're there. Even if you're eating your lunch, you can just stop a minute and tell me what your challenges are. I'll put them in the chat box, that'd be great. Welcome, Beth and Linda. So I've just been asking, what are the what's the sort of big challenge at the moment, and what do you think the challenge is going to be in August? July, you know, the end of July and August. What are the things? Staying cool. I completely agree. I've had to shut my door because I'm working from home, and my daughter and my dog are downstairs, and I'm now already <sighs> collapsing. Yeah, juggling school holidays. That is a big one, isn't it? Uh, school holidays, working full time, building my business. Yeah, biggie. Six weeks holiday, not always a joy for all of us, <laughs> but that's it's planning it, isn't it? I guess I've had to be quite strict with myself to take time off, and I think that's the same with you as well. That you know, they grow up so fast, you have to almost force yourself to take the time out and go, okay, things will wait. If I have a few days with my child this week, um, yeah, okay, well. We seem to be a small number today, but let's get going because I've got quite a few things to talk about today. So, um, first of all, just responding to what Rael said, I think that um, having that discipline with yourself is the key. Um, and so, even if you can just say, I am going to do 20 minutes of AVN this week, that that's enough as long as you've agreed that with your practice growth expert, okay? And then if you can find another three lots of 20 minutes, that's an hour in the week that you can be doing things. So if you're having challenges getting things done in the time allotted, please speak to your practice growth expert about just chunking it down a little bit more so that you are actually feeling like you're achieving something, even if it's only that you've got 20 minutes. Hello, nice to see you. Um, Hi Emma. Hi. Yeah. So we were just just chatting about, you know, what are the what's the big challenge at the moment for you, and what do you think the challenge is going to be in August? So, um, oh, okay, yeah, Linda, let me just send you the actual link because she's having a challenge. Um, just put in there. Oh, yeah, I'll send you an email. One second, thank you. Um, so yeah, because we're just obviously coming into August. So, so far we've got obviously staying disciplined about the work that you've got to do. Um, and also about juggling school holidays or I'm working and building a business and everything else. What's your current challenge? 
Well, it's 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 those other than uh, managing school holidays, really. <laughs> it's just which is enough. <laughs> it's just juggling the heat because it, it's not yeah. good here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Giles and I are already melting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So uh, that yeah, that's proving it, a bit of a challenge. I think the other thing on that is that it's um, just helping people get out of the siege mentality, which is sort of built up, best way I can describe it. They got people who are thinking, oh yeah, this this finally it's, we're promised that things are going to pick up, but some people are still feeling a bit, oh dear, yeah, is it actually going to happen? And uh, it's just a I came across an, a nice expression, which was to remember that the conscious mind should act as you, the gatekeeper to the unconscious and just put up a little barrier to go, okay, that's really your problem. I'm happy to listen, but I'm not going to let it affect me too much. Try and channel my old late father on that one, just going, oh, that's really bad, isn't it? But I can help you with it, but I'm not going to let it affect me directly. Yeah. That's, I think, the main thing. Let me just I've sent some stuff to Linda, so we'll see whether she can get back in. Okay, so um, I think that's going to be an issue for quite a few months to come, isn't it? People's uncertainty. Um, I thought it was really interesting that after Freedom Day, yes, then Boris has suddenly gone, no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe I didn't get that quite right. Um, so yes, there will be some issues and things will be changing and I think it's just, we'll just have to help where we can, won't we? And some businesses will find ways around it and some businesses won't. But I think it's about us to sometimes be that voice of calm. Hi Linda, nice to have you back. <laughs> Sorry, just having issues there and my remote desktop doesn't support Zoom so we were, <laughs> oh, we're all at home here and the, everybody's on the Wi-Fi so all my teenagers are at home as well. So. <laughs> Yes, a bit of an issue, isn't it? My daughter's downstairs Jeez. streaming like mad. I was like, yeah. <laughs> calm down for a bit. Yeah. Okay. So um, there's two areas that I want to focus on today that we've got. I want to point you to some resources in System Builder. Um, the first one is on team um, because I think that, again, so many speak people I'm speaking to that, you know, thought, hooray, we'll have all the team back in the office and everything. And then They've been pinged on the app and they've ended up, you know, it's almost back to working from home pretty much for half the team. Um, and it's how to engage them when we come back into, into whatever normality ends up being um, and making sure that we address their worries, but we also get them focused on moving forward because we can't. Um, we need them to be on our side to make stuff happen. And so we need to address the issues, but then actually go, okay, let's have a focus on having that. And then the other half is about some marketing stuff because despite most of us, I think still being very, very busy, there's still a lot of stuff going on. Um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be thinking about how we communicate to prospects and how we connect to people. Um, and also how we perhaps should turn people down if they're not right, you know, we need to be strong about this. So I want to go into System Builder today. Um, and I want to, uh, can you all see System Builder? Yeah, okay, brilliant. So let's just, um, I'm just gonna minimize that for a second so that I can see it all. So within the knowledge base, you know, there's lots and lots of stuff, but I, I, first of all, I was thinking about, you know, even when there's just a couple of you and that you need to have, um, we need to start having team meetings. I know we've been having communications via Zoom and via you know other things, but as we start communicating a little bit and as things start changing and, and particularly like over the summer holidays and everything's still in a bit of flux, we need to make sure that our meetings are not a waste of our time, that they are relevant. And so um, one thing that, um, came up to me was was there was an action resource called how to have a great team meeting um, and it's a really um, there we go like all all our action resources that are in system builder it's a resource for sort of helping people um, 
try and, and make sure that team weight meetings are a good way of motivating and incentivizing people and carrying out getting enthusiastic about stuff again thinking about the worries that they're having but making sure we're moving forward but more importantly having a bit of thought process about why do we want to hold team meetings and what do we need to get out of it um, it's really easy to slip into them being complete operational meetings um, and that's important you know for all of us we like to know where we are in workflows and you know what's going on with clients and things like that um, but importantly we need to think about the fact that there has to be an op opportunity within those meetings for the following things so first of all for you to pass on your knowledge because again i think because we're all working at home we've we've not had that chance i call it learning by osmosis i don't know if you get that but when you're in an office with other people often you learn by osmosis because even if you're not actually in a conversation and you're not actually actively listening to a conversation things come in come to you because you've sort of your brain has taken it in whatever and sometimes that's knowledge about what's happening in your business and the systems and what you want to do sometimes it's knowledge of, of a learning thing you know um so for example today i've been speaking to somebody you know who has um spent several hours working on hmrc's portal to sort out um cgt on the sale of a rental property and um she said you know despite it supposedly an easy process it wasn't and i said well does that means you're the only person that could do that yeah okay let's pass on the knowledge then somebody else needs it because that's one of the things that they want to spot they want to contact all their people with rental properties and say look you need to understand that if you sell it you have to notify about the cgt within 30 days um so you're yeah, passing on the knowledge sharing that with your team so they understand it sometimes it can do with brainstorming and actually that can be a really good engagement thing to do with the team just to think about okay i've got a client um what could i do to help them think about what could we do to help this client and this is something you know that that we often do as well as you know we'll say okay let's think of a particular industry let's think of a particular client what could we do to help them what could we be offering that gives them some support or maybe we've got a challenge internally you know what is the best way to do something let's have a bit of a brainstorm having a bit of fun you know releasing some of the tension um listening to people giving them chance to air their views having said that again i want you to encourage people that if they've got an issue that they come back with a recommendation okay they can't just use a meeting for a um a, a chance to whinge or, or moan about things but actually come and say look i have this issue this is what I, I think we could do about it and then you can have a discussion about it um so sharing learning new things celebrating stuff that's happened and not just like the obvious stuff but you know if you have helped a client that should be shared around the team people should because everybody's paid a part whatever that is they've had some they've supported the team to, to do, do something. It could be that's just personal stuff, you know? Somebody's managed to hit their target weight at Weight Watchers or somebody's managed to um, do a marathon or somebody's just managed to get through the week without getting cross with their child. Good luck on that one. Because, you know, think about that. How can we celebrate that, you know? Uh, highlights, we call it. Give people a chance to ask questions. So if they are worried about things, that we can deal with it. And perhaps, again, reinforcing or looking at skills, looking at potential looking at ways of helping the team work together and there's lots of ways of of just encouraging that so when you're thinking about a meeting you're thinking okay in this meeting what am i wanting to make sure that is included as part of this because it's great to do all of these things but again there has to be an outcome for the meeting what is the point so you know what having under thinking about what is the point of the meeting how often do we need to meet okay so if if you were going to it says here think about if they were your most important client and it was matters about their business how often do you think they should be talking to each other and um, and that's why we we've always encouraged people to have at least weekly team meetings or weekly ways of communicating to each other even if like you know we have slack and it's open all the time and we're talking to each other all the time and asking each other questions but we also meet up twice a week we have a um, a Monday team meeting, which starts at half past three on a Monday, and that's the one where we discuss our one page plan. And we look at, um, we have a, a Slack channel called A Better Way, so we look at ideas for how we can help each other. And we also nominate each other, <coughs> excuse me, for the team member of the week. So we talk about that. 
And then we also have a, net, a second one on a Thursday, which is literally at half past four on a Thursday. It's just 20 minutes one, which is just about what, what was, what's great that's happened this week. What have you learned this week when you've been working with clients? What have you been doing that's helped them? What are the things that actually you should remember that you, you know, be proud of what you've done? Because often what happens is you come to a Monday meeting and you've completely forgotten what you did the week before. So it was a way of us making sure that we celebrated those. So thinking, what is it for and how long will it be? And actually it could be, you know, a short 10 minutes. Let's just, let's just deal with this, you know. Um, and sometimes you have to be that strong. So again, yesterday we had our quarterly strategy meeting that we have with the team. And we'd all been putting in ideas to discuss again on a Slack channel. And there were lots of them. And so in the end, we just set ourselves a five minute timer for every thing. And at the end of five minutes, we had to make a decision. Are we doing something about it? Are we, are we gonna do something about it next quarter or are we just gonna park it? And then if we are gonna do something about it, who's taking responsibility? And that was a simple, you know, that we tried to make it happen. So you've got to think about, you know, we could make it very quickly if you, if you know what your outcomes are. Again, thinking about what day, again, it really isn't, it's up to you. So if you haven't got the team in all, you know, all week, then what is the day when you have got the most people in? Um, lots of things like that. And then when do you want it? Again, thinking about your team, when they come in, uh, you know, when to move things forward. Now, there also needs to be rules within that meeting. And obviously, courtesy is one of them. I'd expect people to do that. But you actually, as the leader, being there to make sure that people are recognized. A lot of people, you know, we talk about um, team recognition and often, we, you know, we say to people, money is not the thing, is it? It's about being recognized for their efforts. Even if it's not been like the perfect job, if they've made a real, you know, tried really hard at something, they should be recognized. And that then gives them that um, self-belief, you know, that things can go on. So you can keep doing that during the week when you spot something, people doing something good, you know, write it down, make a note. That's why we have our channel on Slack, which is, you know, every time we see somebody doing something great, doesn't matter what it is, we just dump it down there, very short, um, and then we'll discuss it later on. So it's really good. And then maybe other things that you want to bring about, about systems that maybe need to do, you know, what can we do to, to make things you know, better in the business because ultimately the team meetings or any team meeting is about making things better. What I have, we have put in is that agenda is really important. It's an absolute must, okay? You need to, people need to understand why they're coming. And if you've got an agenda, they can be prepared for the conversation. So, you know, why we're here today is to sort out this issue or to see how we're doing with operations, see what we're like with workflow, or, you know, to make sure that we've got some learning. Um, whatever it is, they understand why they're coming. And if there's things on the agenda that you're gonna want their opinion, um, thinking, going right back to profiles, which I know I keep coming back to time and time again, but though most of us who are in the accounting profession are high C and I are high S's, and we like to think about things before we say anything. Um, we, we can't often answer on the spot if somebody says, oh, what's the issue? You know, it's you just come to whatever was in your brain latest, the last thing that was there, not actually made of the most important thing. So giving people a chance to prepare for meetings is really important, which is why the agenda is important. Um, and make sure you know that somebody takes notes of whatever actions. So in our case, we use Trello and Trello sets the actions from our weekly team meetings. And then at the beginning of the following week team matters, we make sure they're all ticked off. And if they're not ticked off, people have to explain why. Um, so it's a good way. We don't have to take full notes. We don't minute everything. We just allocate actions um, for people to do. Lots of ideas here of things you can do to make that, if, that session better. But I think when you've got people have been away from the office, they're wanting to reconnect and they're wanting to move. So I think it's a move together and work together better. So I think what we need to do is just think about that, but more importantly, think of why we're having the meetings, what is the outcome you want, and you know, give people a chance by using agendas to plan for that. Any questions on that one? No? Okay. 
So this sort of slightly supports that, okay? And this is about a learning zone, okay? And um, what it's about is about making sure that you've got a space for people to learn, but more importantly, is it on this one? Sorry, it's two resources and I've put the wrong one, that one. That whenever uh, any team member does something that you record the learning, and I'm not just thinking about um, CPD, though CPD is great. So if people have done CPD, they need to be, be doing something about, okay, what have they learned and how can they share it? So this could be part of your weekly team meeting. Okay. So, but it could be internally, it could be something that they've learned as part of a process. They've decided that something needs to perhaps change in the system because this might lead to that. It could be that they just discovered it about um, they were talking to somebody and they've learned about something else that might be useful for other clients to know about. So it's a really simple form. So, you know, name and date. What did you, where did you discover it? So what is it that you learned? Where was it? What did you find that was important? Do we need to have an action immediately? So for example, if you've discovered that there is a step missing in the system that's really, really important, Okay, then you need to say, I was in System Builder, there's this is the name of the system, there is a step missing, and the consequence of that is because, and yes, I think immediate action needs to take. You could think, oh, um, I've discovered that there's a grant available for um, people in, who've been in business less than five years in our A area. I spotted it in the local um, Chamber of Commerce magazine or whatever else. I think it'd be really good to use that as some marketing information. Immediate action, possibly not immediate, but we do need to plan something. And in, in our case, is this a, a, an okay, good or awesome? Is that something actually looking at our client base, this could be an okay thing, or it could be an awesome one. We've got this. So these are ways of getting people to share what they're learning. So maybe thinking about using something like this again, really simple little process in your systems to just say okay you know even if it's a pad of them you know or a piece of paper i mean i have some of these forms i'm sorry but i'm still paper based but i just printed out on my desk and then i just write on them when i see stuff and then when i'm ready i'll put it up onto you know our system for people to review that again something else that could encourage people to engage a lot better and then the other thing that um, I've noticed, I don't know if you're the same, but a lot of the members I'm speaking to are also thinking about the future and about the fact that actually either they've got teams that are not up to scratch or team that are retiring, or actually they're thinking about in the future, what am I going to need to be doing in my business? My business is changing. So for example, if I have chosen to outsource a huge chunk of the compliance work, then in the future, I'm possibly going to be needing a different type of person to come in and help. So if this is you, or if this is something you're thinking about, perhaps in the next six months to be looking at, this is a great resource, um, Recruiting for the Future. It was actually created by a, a group of accountants who came and sat with me and we brainstormed all the different things um, that were important. And they came up and they helped me create this particular resource, <coughs> excuse me, so importantly, you know, thinking about the strategy of your business, what are you really looking for? You know, what sort of, um, not where we are now, but where we want to be, we need to be recruiting the people that are gonna help us take, us, take our business there to wherever our, our goal is. And also, do we need to think about um, the technological developments? You know, should we have a different organization chart? Are some roles obsolete? Should we have new ones created, you know? And there are there are roles that are becoming obsolete and there are new roles that are coming along because more and more, as well as the compliance, we need to be customer service focused. Um, and again, that's about skills. So thinking for you, again, looking internally with your team, have you done the career development review forms? That's what CDRs are to find out what skills that they have that perhaps you're not taking advantage of. You know, so there are people in your in your business that work for you that have outside hobbies or have been doing things over the last 18 months 
that actually show massive skills, whether that could be leadership skills, that could be organization skills, that could be, you know, helping people with all sorts of management skills. There's all sorts of things that they've been doing, perhaps sales for other people helping. There's all sorts of things. So make sure that during the career development review forms or in one-to-one -one discussions, you actually take an interest in what they're doing outside of the business and see if there are skills that would help you in your business moving forward. So for example, you know, we know that some of, some of our younger team members are just absolute whizzes on social media. It's become part of their everyday life. Well, in that case, let's tap into that and you know, get their advice on how to position them yourself, get their advice on what platforms to use, you know, thinking about your ideal client, obviously, and see whether they can take over doing some of that social media stuff for you. Um, it's as valuable as paying a marketing person is to get your team to just spend, you know, an hour a day helping you with that. Thinking about that, then, do you have a real clear job description of who you're looking at? You know, and for people as well, what is the career path for them? Uh, it's because I think we, I think most of us now are thinking that we need to have a look. We need people who have got a bit of initiative about them, people who want to step up and are happy with the changes and will work you know, with us as opposed to against us when we start putting these changes in place. And then thinking what is essential and what is desirable. You know, So for example, the essential things they came up with was obviously qualifications, software qualifications, be prepared to travel possibly if, if you want, you know, you've got clients in a distance, be competent at dealing with clients, perhaps in this case, do presentations. Again, it depends on the role. Definitely meet our values and our vision. Okay. And then, for example, in this case, some of the ideas were, so, you know, perhaps we've got uh, Spanish. Um, I remember that um, I worked with a Scottish firm, actually, who had a team member who was Polish. And actually, he brought in a lot of clients because he was able to communicate with the Polish community and explain the values and the vision and engage them with some of the things that you're doing. So again, thinking about who you want to attract. Then look at what channels are you gonna use? You know, how do you find that right person? And I have to say that so far, I'm not getting great feedback from recruitment agencies. I do apologize if, if you've got a great experience, great, but I'm not getting a lot of good ones from that. So think about that. And also, if you are going to use a recruitment agency, negotiate with them, please. Some of, I mean, again, simple things like I heard somebody this morning who got a recruitment agency um, from 25% to 16, just by asking. And afterwards, she thought, oh, I could have actually asked that for less because they were just not, you know, okay, yeah, fine. As soon as she said, no, you've got to do it for 16%. Okay. Um, also think about when you recruit somebody, it's not like you just it just happens you have to have somebody who manages the process somebody who will make sure that you know however you recruit they're dealing with that they're managing that when you're getting the process happening that they manage the people that come in you know all sorts of things like that so thinking about how do you want your recruitment process to work um uh you know because i've shown you before that the avm recruitment process is in system builder um where we have a, um, an event and then we have a process after that. It's worked really well for us. Um, and it helps you sort of weed out the wrong people very quickly. Um, so things about this, again, looking at the different things you want. And then ultimately, who has the final say about whether somebody joins you or not? Um, again, in our business, we have a process where um, when we get down to the last two two or three people to, that we are interested in, then we encourage them to come and meet the team. Uh, just have a little chat with each of them, you know, find out about each other, just to see if we feel that they would fit in. I'm not saying that you don't sometimes want somebody who can shake, shake things up a bit and rock the boat, but you do want somebody who will, who understands the dynamics of a, t a team environment and will, you know, push things through and be part of everything because you're dealing with Personality issues is, is very time consuming and hard. So thinking about that, we have the team discuss that. And ultimately though, Shane has the final say. It's his business, he has the final say. We give our, our thoughts to him and he will decide. And then looking at different ways of recruiting. 
So there's lots of ways here. I'm not going to go through these. I haven't got time. But just think about ways of doing it and other ways of attracting people. So being flexible seems to be the big thing at the moment. There's a lot of people who have actually reevaluated their lives during lockdown and are much more focused on that life work balance. That doesn't mean they won't be passionate and they won't commit to you if they believe in your values. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they are they're perhaps being more um, flexible, perhaps thinking about you know what environment they can be working in, giving them a nice space to be in, um, those sorts of things. Uh, you'll see here, you know, getting the tone of the of the ads right. So again, you'll see in System Builder that there's, you know, when we were looking for a, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> software support person <clears throat> with some programming background, uh, we actually used the Star Trek theme to attract somebody because we knew that they would fit in with the existing team we had, who were all Trekkies. <clears throat> so it made it work really well. Excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um. So again, we thought, uh, we looked at what they thought that the team of the future would need to be. And this is what they came out with. Technically savvy, somebody who's willing to learn uh, and keep up to date with technology. Self-disciplined, be able to work alone more, you know, more and more being allowed, allowed to be working remotely and trusted. Inspired by the why. So why are we in business? What do we want to achieve? Looking for people who want to develop into the partners of the future. We want people who has that, have that passion and will sort of, you know, help drive that. Be adaptable because as we're moving forward, I think there's more and more multiple roles needed within a business and be customer focused. And then their dream team they put would be prepared to challenge because they want somebody who's not just a yes person, but somebody says, you know, why are you doing that? Why can't we do this differently? Because we need somebody who, you know, just questions us every now and again, holds us to account. Have, have clear vision and values is loyal self-motivated willing to step up so those people you know where you say can somebody help me with this or you know they'll go yeah I'll take i've not done it but i'll have a go um good you know working with the team passionate about being a force for good you know if that's you know we want to make a difference why interested in other people want to change lives positive enthusiastic and go the extra mile and again there's a whole load of resources in here supporting you with that so I just thought if this is somewhere where you're going, whether that's recruiting your first team member or whether that's recruiting team moving forward, have a look at perhaps just using this as a thought process first, because it's so easy to just go, oh, do you know what I need? I need a bookkeeper or I need um, an accounts technician or I just need somebody actually just stop a second. Yes, you may need them to deal with an issue at the moment. Um, and, that, and that's important because we want to take work off you. So some of that work needs to be handed over to somebody else, doesn't it? Whether that's an employee or outsource or whatever it is, uh, but also thinking about future, who can help you achieve your goals? Um, that's really where I'm thinking about this. Any questions, anybody? Yes, Linda, would you like to mic on? Hi, yeah, I've just been given the HR hat. So we're all, um, presenting hybrid working to our employees as an option and we have to write that into contracts do you have anything in system builder that can help me write something into contracts for hybrid working um we don't have any legal wording okay because that's, uh, obviously that changes and it's quite specific and hr's a very sensitive system mm. but we don't have anything like that what we do suggest though is as well as the legal contract you have what we call a team member's handbook mm -hmm. so there is the the sort of ultimate legal requirements of working for your company but then within the as part of that you say also anything in the in the handbook also applies mm -hmm. and then in the handbook you can be a bit more um what to say speak in a more human tone you know explain things a little bit better because yeah. sometimes the legal phrasing of things can be very off-putting and so actually be able to explain a little bit more about what you expect by uh, that sort of type of working, what you expect as, as sort of um, what that means to you as a company. Um, so whereabouts on System Builder would I find? Yeah, so if you just type in a team member handbook in Knowledge Base, you'll get an example of one. Okay. Um, 
and it just again it's for you to be flexible as you like so and it can have all sorts of things in it so you know we've got in ours we've got things like dress codes and we've got things like you know um sick the sick pain and stuff obviously which is legal but also you know how we have to notify people about being sick and things mm -hmm. like that um we also have some some extra sort of positive things so we have a thing called duvet days so up to six times a year if you wake up and you're feeling absolutely rubbish you can message in and say i'm feeling rubbish i'm taking a duvet day and what that means is you've got until 11 o'clock to get into work and what happens with that is that often what happens is you take some paracetamol you get a cup of tea and usually if you've woken up at seven feeling rubbish or six at feeling rubbish by about half past nine, 10 o'clock, you're actually feeling okay enough to work. Uh, so often that allows us to be, usually gets people to work when they wouldn't have done they would take the full day sick. It sounds really daft, but for us, it's actually a positive thing because you don't, you know what, I can just say, let me just trigger and do their day. Um, I've not heard so, of those before, so that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, it works really well for us because it, it, does, it does allow us to have those, particularly when we had, um, when we were younger and some of us were out quite often late at night you know you, you could come in and feel okay I've been out and I can have you know an extra hour in bed and not worry about it but I'll be back in work at 11 because they knew that I'd make up that work whatever um but it just gave me so little things you can put whatever you like in there little things you want to put in there but yeah look for that thank you okay any other questions so does anybody recommend anyone for HR that you would uh you would go to for the legal wording. There is there is a lady that spoke on one of the Thursday sessions. I will get you her details. Thank you. I can't remember her name at the moment. I don't know if anybody uses anybody else, but I remember she was very clear as well, which is good. Thank you very much. So the other area that I want to have a quick look at, because of the time, is about um, getting more clients or actually just making sure that we continue with promoting ourselves out there in the world. Um, and I wanted to start with um, a, a resource that's actually designed as um, letters. But I was thinking about this and thinking, well, actually, why, do we, why could it be letters? It could be whatever we like. Um, so there is a, let's find an actual resource. Um, here called marketing letters in financially difficult times. So there's a lot of obviously concerns um, still going on, uh, even those that have been doing okay um you know there are start, starting to worry about things because the rules are changing every day it seems um and this was a resource we wrote a while ago which is about helping people we've got a whole um action resource called the difficult financial times toolkit and it's got a whole se series of things that you can suggest to help people um to think about their businesses differently and to help them you know just think more about how they're managing their money and how financially they're working and it um and it's uh, there's a the idea with this was that you sent out a letter and then you had someone ring up and just check that they got the letter. So this is the script for the letter afterwards. But here's here are the letters. But I'm thinking, why can't these be LinkedIn posts or you know why can't these be blogs on your website? Um, because I thought you know if you could just start with, ouch, are you feeling the pinch? You know. If if your business continues to thrive during these difficult times, and that's fantastic. But if you're finding that things are getting tougher then maybe you could do with a helping hand. Is it worth an hour of your time to see how we can strengthen your business? So again, and all this does, as you can see, it talks about the key improvement possibilities report, which I'm hoping all of you know is the on track report is the report. So again, very simple thing for you to create. Um, and in this case, again, you can change the wording, but you know, again, we're happy to come and visit you when it's convenient. We'll even bring coffee and cake um, or, you know, if you want to meet somewhere safe, that's fine, whatever it is. Okay. So I was just thinking that, you know, they could be rather than having the secretary book thing, because, you know, if you're interested, book a call with us. And if you're using something on your website, allows people to book a call, then they can do, or, you know, 
whatever it is, there, I think it's possibly a good idea of connecting. The second one is about, you know, it's a cutthroat world out there. Um, and again, this one is actually, again, encouraging you to perhaps think about benchmarking somebody. But thinking about how people are thinking about at the moment, these headings, I think, are quite good as, as perhaps little ideas or blogs. They could be letters if you've got a prospect list, but again, these might be something you could do. And I thought this is quite nice. Would you buy a car without knowing how much it cost? Not likely. So why should you agree to pay an accountant's fees when you don't know what they are? It's like signing a blank check. But that's what thousands of people do every day when they use an account who doesn't charge fixed prices. So again, this is another thing about that. So a, a little resource. Again, remember that everything that we have, although it might be written as, an, as a letter or as a script or whatever else, there's no reason why you can't use it differently. There's no reason why you can't use it in blogs. You can't use it in, you know, LinkedIn. You can't use it wherever you want it to be. It could be a little, you know, thing if you've managed to use connect to something like the Your Mag, that the local mags that go around. That could just be a little tiny article, couldn't it? That you could just put in there with that as as the sort of heading, and then maybe a little bit inside. Um, so you could say, for example, on the on track one, um, which is this what this one here, you know. Uh, we find that nine out of 10 people um, have no real idea what's going on in their business financially. They are making decisions based purely on guesswork. Um, and we can really help you get control of that and feel confident that you've got the money you need. Something just a little paragraph like that. With benchmarking, you could say, you know, one of the big things that we always find is people do not understand how their pricing affects their bottom line profits. Let's go, you know, let's talk about that. So there's lots of things you could do with that. And if you want help with that, that's fine. You know, we're quite happy to help with those extra little bits. So another resource in here that you could use as a sort of pre-written content that you can just put out there. Um, as you can see, I've got a pending revision that I've not looked at. I don't know if you all know about pending revisions. So somebody's already updated this. Look, there's the latest version. So I need to make sure that I've just checked that and I accept it. So that's one of them that I was thinking about. Um, the other thing, again, um, possibly that we've not really pushed so much um, that we used to do. Uh, you might have seen them around, particularly if you've watched some of our members' videos where they've got these in the background. Um, but we have designed a whole a series of posters that you can put on your meeting room wall or you can have um, around that um, encourage people to just stop and think. And the idea was that when we created them, so this is the main resource, okay, you can see here we created 17 ready to print posters, okay? You can customize them however you want. That's why we've got the artwork as a separate um, template. And just have them as something that can appear. It could be something as a holding slide, for example, when you're going on to Zoom, you know, you can have that as your opening holding slide before you're ready to switch your camera on one of these. It could be that you just have them on the wall. And what they are, are a series of posters that just, make them think about it, about some extra things. So if anything were possible, what would you do with an extra million pounds? And how would it make you feel? Yeah, if anything were possible, what else would you have or do, do or achieve? And how would that make you feel? If it was possible, how quickly would you like to pay off your mortgage? And how would that make you feel? So there's, there's loads of them. Again, these are here purely for you to use. So this is, this is the, the blue template. Um, there is the AVM version template. So that's all in the oranges and grays ready to use, which for some reason is not downloaded there. Uh, and there you go. So here we go. So they're just there with the AVM logos on if you want that. Um, or you can have your own because this is the artwork. So you can download the artwork. As you can see, there's a funny font that you do have to download to make it work. And then you can change whatever you like, which is what I did for the AVM one. They are great conversational openers, as well as having them as posters. I had some, uh, there was a member who made them almost into like a little deck of cards for, um, as like business card signs, size. And so uh, they would leave them on the table if they were going to somebody else, you know, if they were meeting somewhere else, as opposed to, you know, if they didn't have their own meeting room, they were using a, um, a room they hired, 
they would leave them on the table. Um, so people could look at them and pick up the one that resonated with the most. Uh, so use this stuff is what I'm saying. And if you, if you want to sort of change the way things that you want to change people's experience when they come and meet you, then it's a good thing to perhaps think about is looking at something like these posters um, and helping you move, move forward that way because it gets them to open their minds, ask you questions, think differently. And when we're talking about positioning all the time about how people see you, something like the posters and those questions make people think a little bit differently rather than seeing, um, you know, a bit of artwork. Having said that, there's some beautiful artwork out there, isn't there? So, you know, whatever makes it, makes you have that great conversation. And finally, I wanted to um, just um, point you to a resource, which is telling a potential client you don't want them. Uh, so this is something somebody said to me the other day, I feel awful, how do I tell people that I don't really want them? Um, and there's a really nice, I think, gentle letter here, which is ready for you to use exactly how it is. So it says, thank you so much for your time. It was a great pleasure to meet you and learn about your business. As you know, our reputation as one of the region's leading firms of accounts is built on integrity. And for that reason, I feel it's only fair to tell you that at this time, I don't believe you are the right accountants for you. Like you, I'm in the business to make money and it pains me to have to turn away an opportunity. But like you, we will only take a client's money if we genuinely believe that we are the best possible option for them. In your case, I cannot put my hand on my heart and say that. And so I'm sure you will agree it would be unethical and unfair to you if I invited you to become a client. And then, then this is your option. Given your size, circumstance and budget, I believe that your affairs will be best suited to a smaller firm of accountants. And um, if it would be helpful, I would be delighted to recommend a couple of smaller firms who I think would be more suitable. Thank you again for your interest in us. I wish you all the very best for a successful, enjoyable and profitable future. Now, I think that's written in a way that's from the heart and you know is not offensive and for you that means that for those people that come to you that are not your ideal client you are feeling comfortable turning them away okay now again this is the sort of thing that you could use as a script couldn't you there's no reason why you know you spoke to somebody and actually say this while you're there i can't put my hand on heart and say that i'm the best possible option for you it would be unethical and unfair for me to do that. I think actually given your size, circumstance and budget, it would be better that you worked with a small firm of accountants or a different firm of accountants, whatever the, the plan is, because you need to make sure that you're fair. So again, think about where you have those issues where you're a bit concerned or maybe that you are worried about stuff and please come and ask us, you know, don't ever not use something or not, you know, talk about something with a client because you're worried about what to say. Come and talk to us about it. Yeah. And this is even if something, you know, when I, I've got this, a lot of people now are starting to do um, what we call discovery calls, aren't we, with prospects. So a prospect, you know, comes from wherever. And in the past, we would have just taken them on board. And now actually we have a process of saying, okay, are these, do these people match my ideal client process program? You know, do they the right people I want to work with? Thinking about the future of my business, I have to start being strict with myself about who I take on. And there will be people who come that are not right. And having something ready, whether that's in a letter or an email, that's fine. If you can't say it face to face, or if you're happy to say it face to face, then that's, you know, that's something that you probably need to be prepared for. So any questions about these things so far? No question, it's an observation. I'm glad to brought the posters up. Completely forgotten about those and using them as a Zoom holder. Oh, oh there's a blessing in our heart. There <laughs> we go. I gave you one idea. Fantastic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. That's my goal. At least one idea. Okay. Very last thing because I'm running out of time. Um, I just wanted to remind you if I can just open it. Um, it's in there. Yeah. I wanted to remind you of our YouTube channel. So I don't know how many of you have registered on our YouTube channel. Um, AVN Inspiring Accountants, don't go to AVN, we know that's different. The AVN Inspiring Accountants, 
all these things that we do are recorded up here and put up here okay so the tuesday sessions where we're doing resources and things like that we put them up here we have various playlists so if you want to just find anything that's to do with like wellness because kerry's been putting some amazing stuff up on there or you know if you want to find just anything that's to do with for example software so if you look at the software you can see right. oh, well don't I'm want to jump back stop that that there's a whole playlist of ones for you to have a look at marketing so just again remember that there's a lot of stuff already in here there's a lot of stories from other accountants who have done things as well um so have a look at the different playlists and make sure that you are aware that we put stuff up here on a regular basis if you are subscribed then you'll get notifications so when we're putting stuff up like today you'll get an information saying okay and what i tend to do is when i'm doing recordings and i put them up i will put in there what resources i have highlighted so that you know that's the bit you wanted to look at because it's really hard to remember everything i've said i do understand that um so please if you haven't subscribed to it please do um and you know get your team to look at that as well you know when they want training on software or they want to look at something get them to look there as well um, because it's a good way if it's a situation like this people will have asked those questions that they have as well and we will have dealt with it. So, anything I can help you with before we finish today? No? Thanks, thanks Emma. Um, I think uh, quite helpful. In fact, uh, this uh, recruitment resource should help because I'm thinking of bringing a couple of people on board, at least one person or um, on, on the tax front. Um, and, uh, uh, these, uh, what is the posters which you say, you know, they, they, I think they can come in handy as well. So, Brilliant. thanks, thanks for uh, that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Do appreciate you coming. Uh, next week, it's a software week. So, if you have got any questions about any of the software, uh, then come along. And either, I think it's Jenny next week, but it might be me, I can't remember. We'll be answering all your questions about software showing you anything you want us to show you it's a complete open forum for people to ask us stuff okay Great. so please join us next week one, one yeah. thing emma before you go does this mean we're back to weekly tuesdays now we are weekly tuesdays but what we happen is on the first and the third ones i'll be looking at resources ah. learning and on the second and the fourth we'll be doing software right but so i thought it, there'd been a gap and then i think maybe maybe a bit out of kilter with when they are at the moment yeah, there was so a they're, gap they're, they're, they're every Tuesday, apart from if you've got a month with five weeks in and we don't do the last week, we'll let you have a week off. But other than that, it's every Tuesday at 12.30. And, uh, but we're just slightly changing the content to allow people to have time to come and talk about software a bit more as well. Okie dokie. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a lovely day. And I hope we're not all melting like I am. Like, you know, in, for example, in my case, uh, being a sole practitioner, right? then, you know, like this uh, meetings generally don't work because my, let's say that the, the teams are outsourced basically. Right. Right. So often on, yeah, I would have meetings with the outsourced uh, teams, right? Uh, but uh, then um, I, I, do you use the same sort of template, but uh, in the first person? So then, you know, I'm sort of monitoring myself. Which um, well, yeah, the the first template, yeah, first template you put forward, like, yeah. uh, you know, for where, let's say you just got your sole practitioner, mm -hmm. then how, how would it uh, fit in? So if you're outsourcing, obviously, you're still going to have to have meetings with your outsourcer company, aren't you? Yes. So I think you still need an agenda in that, which talks about what are the key things you need to know from the outsourcing company to feel comfortable and how can you feed back mm. any learning issues to their team because they've the, the whole point is to make sure that your outsourcing company are giving you thanks Ivan, uh, are giving you the work in the state that you want mm. so if it's not coming back then there's a learning opportunity for them isn't there as well and if mm. you have it as an agenda and you have it recorded either in some way either recording a zoom meeting or having a report given that they then at least you've given that information and it's then part of the contract of how they're going to do the work for you then, isn't it? Mm.
Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll give it a try. We'll okay. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. It'd be great to see how you get on. All okay. right. Thanks Thank very much, everyone. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye.